Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Patrick Byrne. I help manufacturers making over $50 million in revenue implement AI systems. AI is changing the manufacturing industry forever. And today I'm going to run through 10 use cases and actually a couple of bonus use cases that manufacturers are using at the moment with real examples of companies doing each of these solutions. I'm going to run through these pretty quickly, but I will run through these in more detail in future videos. Use case number one, predictive maintenance. AI machine learning models are being used to analyze sensor data to predict failures and machine downtime. So this proactive approach minimizes downtime on your machines and makes sure that your factory stays up and running. Big benefit of this is, you know, reducing that unexpected downtime. Uh, downtime is fine when you plan for it, but unexpected downtime can really hurt your schedules as well as your overall production capacity. So an example of one company using predictive maintenance and using AI in predictive maintenance, that is, is Siemens. So Siemens have implemented this across their whole factory, of all their factories, and they're analyzing the sensor data of their machines. And because of that, they're able to predict all of these malfunctions way in advance. So their overall production capacity has increased significantly because of this. Number two, quality control and defect detection. So by using AI vision systems, you can identify defects on machines that humans may not have seen uh, before they reach the end of the line. An example of a company doing this is BMW. So BMW are using these AI vision systems on their production lines. And what they're seeing is they're catching these defects much earlier than they were. So they don't need to do as much rework of machines. Big benefit of this is, you know, you're catching these defects early. So it means that you're not finishing off uh, a full car, for example, before you realize later on down the line that there was a problem earlier on, and it may, you know, fail a quality check later down the line, or even worse, that car ends up in a customer's hands and the customer is not happy with it. So what you're going to get as a result of this is you're going to have, you know, improved uh, customer relations. You're going to have happier customers but you're also gonna reduce the amount of overwork of you know, faulty products and products that will later have to be called back anyway. Number three is a use case that helps supply chain optimization as well as logistics. So AI is enhancing supply chain and logistics by improving route management, as well as optimizing the schedules for deliveries, as well as you know shipping and, and all these kind of things. So, DHL, for example, is using AI to optimize the routes that their vans go, as well as I know that the US Postal Service is doing this over in the US. And what happens here is by taking a lot of uh, other factors related to data into account, they're able to you know, reduce the amount of time that it takes to get to places. They're reducing fuel costs. Um, they're getting things delivered on time. And uh, they're overall just reducing the amount of work that's done by their drivers. Obviously, you get a big cost saving as a benefit to this, as well as just improved reliability. So people can trust that you're going to get to them on time. And if you're somebody who uh, works in an industry where you have to go out and do service for your customers all the time, um, it's really important that when you say you show up, that you do show up because they might be pausing something on their site. Uh, they might be pausing the production line. So if you do say you're going to be somewhere, you better be there. So that's just supply chain optimization. So number four then, uh, robotics and automation. And this is a use case that's massive uh, in the larger manufacturers. I know a lot of smaller manufacturers are starting to get involved in this. And I think that trend is only going to improve or increase when you see things like the Tesla Optimus robot, which is going to be launched sometime late this year, maybe in, in next year. So obviously having robots or cobots do a lot of the work uh, of the heavy lifting and the repetitive tasks increases a, a lot of efficiency in your in your business. But um, a real example of a company that, that I've seen do this close hand is uh, MPI Systems. So MPI Systems is a leader in wax injection systems. And they actually create um, systems or robotic systems that automate most of the wax room for most manufacturers. And what used to be done by five employees is now capable of being done by one. And you might be thinking that this is something that might scare your team or, you know, create some sort of uh, negative culture around AI and automation. But 
I actually see this as a great opportunity to move people up in your business. So these people who already know your business, they understand the process, you're actually giving them the, the ability to move from what's quite a, a skilled manual labor task up into something where maybe they're having more of an impact in decision making or um, you know, working with your customers. And, and because they know your business already, you don't have to do as much training. So it's a great opportunity for manufacturers who I know are struggling to find and keep talent. So I think that this is really what people should be looking at is like, are there places in our business that we can automate so that we can start to move people into more senior positions? It's very difficult to hire and it's only getting more difficult. Uh, so I would be really taking advantage of these sorts of robotics and automation systems. Number five is demand forecasting. So using AI to analyze usual customer trends to start to understand when do people tend to buy stuff? And this can help with production planning. Um, and this is really important if you're a food manufacturer. So an example of this is Nestle. Uh, Nestle is using AI algorithms to predict customer demand for a ton of the different products across their range. And this helps to optimize your production schedules, reduce production waste. And when you're a food manufacturer and you need to be concerned about, you know, shelf life of your food, it's really important that you don't overproduce in certain times of the year um, and end up having one, just a big buildup of stuff in, in your warehouse, but two um, products that are just, you know, sitting around before they end up on the shelf. So um, obviously this can be used across all other industries, but I think in, in the food manufacturing industry, this one's really important. Number six then is inventory management. And this is more on the side of the inventory that you're using to produce stuff, right? So again, by, you know, anticipating demand and looking ahead at production schedules, you can start to predict the stock requirements and start to automate the order process of a lot of the equipment that you tend to use frequently, or a lot of the machinery or a lot of the uh, components of the machines that you're going to need. So Toyota, for example, uh, is using AI to manage the inventory. Uh, so like the parts inventory, uh, assuring that like they don't have any unnecessary downtime caused by, you know, running out of a specific uh, piece of equipment. So obviously uh, Kanbans and things like this are, are very helpful with this, but you can start to use digital versions of these things um, hooked up to systems that can actually order all of these for you. So you can really reduce that unnecessary downtime and inventory waste. Number seven, and this is one that we're working pretty closely uh, with a number of manufacturers on at the moment. And this one is finding internal information and what this is, is having AI connect up to your data sources and creating a knowledge base. So this knowledge base enables you to put information all in one place. Uh, so you can just talk to that knowledge base and find that information and find links to documentation a whole lot faster. So a company that's using this, and honestly, there's thousands of companies doing this around the world already, but Pfizer is a great example. Um, Pfizer is using what we call AI enterprise search to find information in their business a lot faster. And why is this important? Well, employees, especially knowledge workers are spending two and a half to three and a half hours of their workday. So like that's, you know, over 30% of their workday looking for information that can be reduced by at least 50%. So, you know, making it kind of in that one and a half hour range, um, rather than two and a half to three and a half hours. This obviously has a massive impact when you're giving your team back an extra five to seven hours a week. But when you look at the downstream effects of this, like the fact that, you know, your team are getting interrupted less often, you know, we've all got that person in the business who knows everything about the business and they've been there for a long time and they're really, really good at their job, but they tend to get interrupted all the time during the day. And because of that, they get way less done than they're capable of. And by implementing a system like this, where yes, maybe they will have to still answer some questions, but whenever they do answer a question, that information gets trained back into the knowledge base. And then the next time someone just asks the system. And what this means is you can actually document the knowledge of your most senior people and make sure that you don't lose that knowledge over time, but also get more from them while they're still here. So. This is a, a use case I really love. It, it's one that I, I spend a lot of time on. And I do think that it's it's gonna be something that we see almost every company in the world using in three to five years. Number eight now is 
energy management. And this is another use case that I really like. And I used to spend a lot of time doing this uh, while I was at Intel. So what this is, is monitoring all of the sensor data that comes in from your equipment in the manufacturing facility. Um, and that can be, you know, your facilities equipment, that can be your manufacturing equipment, uh, your lighting, it can be pretty much everything, right? So what you're doing and a, an example of, of Intel, what they were doing is you're looking at, you know, the, uh, the usage of all your HVAC equipment, of all your uh, data center equipment, and you're trying to find uh, using AI systems, ways to optimize the energy consumption of each of these systems. And this does take a lot of data to do. It's not something that a lot of manufacturers are really able to do right away, but by investing in this over time, you can actually see massive improvements in your overall you know, cost efficiency, your energy efficiency, and you can just have a, a much better impact on the environment. So um, at Intel, I can't tell you exactly how much we're, we're saving, but it was in the range of millions of kilowatt hours a year. And because of that, you know, you're saving tons of money. You're improving your company's reputation as an energy leader, uh, which Intel has a great reputation of. Um, but you're also helping with that predictive maintenance that I talked about earlier, because as assets start to get later on in their life cycle, you'll start to see that their energy performance starts to degrade. So all of this stuff starts to work together and it's about creating the data so that you can start to use the data in all of these different ways. So number nine then is safety monitoring. And this one is a little bit invasive, some people might say, uh, but essentially what you're doing is you're using cameras and sensor equipment to identify things around your factory that are, um, let's say like hazards and, and dangerous for your employees. So you're trying to make the working environment more safe for your employees. And yes, people may not be happy that they're gonna be on camera all the time, but you know, what you're doing here is you're you're detecting things across the whole site so it's not just like what the people are doing but it's also like machi uh, machinery malfunctions you know leaks um anything of this sort that helps you to or even just waste just lying around in the manufacturing floor but uh, what you're doing here is you're able to trigger immediate responses to fix these things um which can save on downtime it can it can save on accidents in the workplace so you really can't put a price on reducing the amount of workplace accidents. Um, and I know you can see the benefit of this, so I'll, I'll leave it there. So I've saved the best to last and number 10, which is my favorite use case for manufacturers, especially manufacturers that don't really have the data infrastructure yet is customer service. Your team have spent thousands or maybe even hundreds of thousands of hours over the past 10 or 15 years solving customer queries. And a lot of times the information that's in those email service tickets or wherever you keep your service tickets is actually more valuable and more useful than the information in your documentation. Uh, because it's, it's the real troubleshooting steps that people have to go through, not necessarily the ones in the manuals, right? So you can start to create a really good knowledge base and start to improve the speed at which you help your customers start to improve the uh, types of responses that you give them to your customers as well as kind of, you know, smoothing out that, uh, you know, the, the, the graph of like who is providing the best service and everyone in your team can start to provide a similar level of service because they're finding the same data. And the real benefits of customer service, and there's so many of them, right? Like, but the real benefits are the improved customer satisfaction, as well as the positive reviews that you get, the referrals, the you know repeat orders that you get when you support your customers well so that's my little rant on customer service it's something i really care about and it's something that i, I focus a lot on uh, when i start working with companies but this isn't even all of the use cases we're seeing and i'll just run through a, a few quick examples um so one is you know the automation of creating reports um whether that is you know reports about the production systems or whether it's quotes, uh, bill of materials, sales orders, whatever that might be, you can automate the filling in of a lot of these documents and then just have a person sign off on it at the end. So just, you know, just double check it, for example. Um, and a lot of the systems that I've talked about here, 
it's about using the AI to come up with potential solutions and then having a human look at it and confirm. I really do believe that it's really important that we use AI in that sense. And then we allow the humans to kind of check and double check and see, you know, based on their actual experience in the process, does this make sense? And over time, we can maybe start to go more on the automation side. But I think at the moment, it's really, really useful to have a human to double check things. So other things that I've seen people doing is actually automating the SOLIDWORKS drawings uh, coming from the, the bill of materials. So you use the bill of materials to then auto create uh, the SOLIDWORKS drawings. I'm also seeing uh, AI being used in product design and innovation. So improving products. And then other parts is just like, you know, the overall process improvement around your factory. So there's tons that you can do with AI and it's really about starting to use something. So starting with a simple pilot project and then moving from there, right? So you don't want to try to take all of this on in one go. You want to start with one little small project. And that's why I often say that customer support is the best place to start because you've most likely already got the data. You've most likely already got um, you know, tons of internal documentation that can be used uh, on this. You maybe just need to refine the way that you're doing it. So yeah, in terms of like where I would start, if I was a manufacturer, I would look at customer support, but I'd also just look at other areas of the business where you've got a lot of data. Um, the more data you've got, even if it's not clean, you can always work to clean that data up. So have a look, see where you've got information and data that you can use for AI systems and then start to choose, you know, single individual projects and start to work on those. And you can really start to expand on that over time. I would obviously suggest that if you don't have anyone in your business who has experience with data systems or AI, that you find somebody who can help you with this, that's worked on these types of projects before. If you do have any questions about AI systems or about implementing AI or managing your data in your manufacturing facility, do feel free to, to fill in the form below. Uh, you can ask us a question and I'll send a video response back to you uh, within a couple of days. We aren't really taking on clients at the moment. We do have a bit of a backlog in terms of people that we need to get set up and, and onboarded. So because of that, we're quite selective in terms of who we're taking on at the moment, but I would love to be able to provide some sort of value in any way I can. So um, feel free to drop us a, a message below uh, in the form and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you got some value out of the video today. And yeah, I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you very much and see you soon.